The two infantry weapons you will likely associate with the US military during World War II are the M1 Garand and the Thompson submachine gun. But there was also another which is often overlooked due to its strange appearance. The M3 submachine gun, nicknamed the Grease Gun, played an integral part for some troops during the war. In today's video, we look at the crude looking weapon and why it actually wasn't as bad as it looks. The Thompson submachine gun, or Tommy gun, was developed by the United States in 1918 and during the interwar years would see various versions created. During the Second World War, this weapon was purchased and used by the British, and eventually in 1942, once the US joined the fight, they too used it in battle. However, the Tommy gun was quite expensive, at around $45 per unit, as well as being complex to manufacture. So in short, an alternative was sought by the military. In steps the M3 submachine gun. This weapon, nicknamed by its similar appearance to a grease gun of that era, was made from welded sheets of steel, the bolt and the barrel being the only costly parts to manufacture, with the rest being pressed or spot welded together. The total unit cost was around $20, and a lot less than the Tommy gun. At 29 inches long and weighing in at 9 pounds, it was fairly simple to use. The operator pulled back a retracting handle to cock the bolt before inserting the magazine in the bottom. It could contain a maximum of 30 rounds of .45 caliber. The strange looking dust cover could be folded down which acted as the weapon's safety, or lifting the flap up meant it was ready to fire. A pull of the trigger enabled the M3 to have a rate of fire of around 450 rounds a minute. Production of the gun was authorised and began in early 1943. Once it entered service, it was mainly issued to tankers, paratroopers and other personnel who required a compact weapon. Its reviews between the troops are varied, with some believing its simplicity meant it was easy to use and maintain, with others taking issue with its appearance and reliability. Although many say for what it was, its accuracy was quite decent. One main issue though was the cocking handle, which was often damaged or pulled off entirely. This would essentially render the weapon useless. Further, the magazine release was loose with some field maintenance by the troops needed. The M3A1 improved version rectified this, and instead of the cocking handle, it had a small hole put into the bolt, where the operator could put their finger in to slide it back. The safety flap was also changed, these improvements allowed for more reliability and accuracy. The gun would see use till the end of World War II. Following the war and after the discovery of German military secrets, it was used to test out a number of theories. For example, here are a grease gun with a curved barrel, similar to that of the German Kramlauf. The grease gun would then see action in both the Korean and Vietnam wars until the M16 phased it out entirely from the US military. So ultimately, just because it wasn't going to win any beauty contests, didn't mean it wasn't that bad of a gun after all. What are your thoughts on the M3 grease gun? Do you think it gets a bad rap because of its appearance? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.